Welcome to the, the PPMD webinar on, on MOVE DMD. This is a, a phase one, two clinical trial with, with a catabasis compound CAT 1004. I'm John Porter. I'm the CEO of Parent Project Muscular Dystrophy, and I'll be moderating the webinar today. So for the webinar, we're, we're pleased to have Dr. Joanne Donovan. Um, Joanne has been the catabasis chief medical officer since July 2011. Uh, she holds a Ph.D. in medical engineering and medical physics from Massachusetts Institute of Technology and an M.D. from Harvard Medical School. She completed residency and fellowship also in Boston at the Brigham and Women's Hospital and has served in staff position, uh, staff physician positions at, at the VA in Boston, and she's held an appointment at Harvard since 1990. So, her industry experience was that she was at the Genzyme Corporation from 1998 to 2011, and as I said, since then, she served as Chief Medical Officer at Catabasis and is directing the CAT 10,001, sorry, 1001 Clinical Development Program. So, Joanne, would you like to start? Well, thank you, John. And, and first of all, I'd, I'd like to uh, say welcome to the people on the call and to very much thank uh, PPMD. Uh, John and, and all the folks there for uh, allowing us to uh, share some of our, our data, some of our excitement about the upcoming uh, MOVE DMD study. Uh, a lot of uh, people in the field have, have worked uh, hard on getting us to this point, and we are very excited about it. Uh, Catabasis is a company that is, is located uh, in Cambridge with 31 people. Uh, we have uh, we are very much focused on developing uh, important medicines that are, are paradigm changers uh, for patients with rare diseases. Uh, we have a team that is very experienced in drug discovery, uh, and we've brought drugs uh, from before phase one uh, all the way uh, to through registration. Uh, we believe that our philosophy is to put patients first uh, and to put science first. Uh, and uh, that uh, that will lead us in the in the right direction. We've been very fortunate to work with both uh, PPMD and uh, the uh, MDA uh, for several years now, and they've been extremely supportive of uh, moving uh, this uh, uh, development program uh, forward. So why are we uh, looking at uh, CAT 1004? This is an investigational uh, drug uh, that we are developing for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And uh, we are looking at this from the point of view that while we know that dystrophin is, absolute, is fundamental uh, to the disease process, it's the lack of dystrophin together with mechanical stress that target a particular molecule, that target uh, NF-kappa B and activate it in muscle. And it's this process that leads to muscle degeneration and the inflammation, fibrosis, uh, and inhibition of muscle regeneration that occurs ultimately lead to, to loss of function uh, in the boys. We know that steroids uh, work in Duchenne. They suppress inflammation. But we also know that they have significant side effects and long term, uh, they uh, do not maintain uh, muscle uh, integrity. Now, I'm going to stop, start with a little bit of, of the basic science uh, on the next slide. Uh, the activation of NF-kappa B happens very, very early in the disease process. It's basically the first thing that, that is observed. Uh, and this slide is from uh, Eric Hoffman's group. And it looks at muscle both from uh, infants with Duchenne uh, in the upper panel and in normal muscle of infants of the same age. And what that arrow is pointing to, the red here, uh, is the activated NF-kappa B that occurs in the, the Duchenne muscle but does not occur in the normal muscle. And this is basically the first thing that happens. This molecule, NF-kappa B, plays a key role in the cell's response to uh, inflammation and mediates its, its uh, inflammatory response, as well as a key component of normal muscle health. So in patients with, with Duchenne, the first thing that happens is that NF-kappa B is chronically activated. 
and you can see it here in, in uh, microscopic sections, uh, in, in infants, uh, in boys later in life. And what's, what is very important is that it happens predominantly in muscles that are mechanically stressed. So in, in animal models, they've shown that purely pulling the muscle, stressing the muscle mechanically and, and uh, causing it to contract activates the NF-kappa B process. And that then is key in mediating inflammation, ultimately muscle degeneration, and limits muscle regeneration. It's an important part of the process as well. So on the next slide, we have been, um, the, it shows one of the, the key points of the importance, not just of the lack of dystrophin, but also of activation of NF-kappa B. And on the, the left here is shown uh, a cross-sectional muscle or cross-sectional uh, image of thigh muscles from a boy who's age 12. And these MRI images uh, have been uh, collected in, uh, by the group Imaging DMD that have really been leaders uh, in understanding how MRI can uh, show us uh, the, the uh, progression of the disease and hopefully also uh, be able to show us the, in, the impact of drugs uh, such as CAT-1004 on the disease process. So here on the left, the control muscle, you can see these are the, the quadriceps, the hamstrings uh, in this 12-year-old boy. And on the right, a boy with uh, DMD at age 14, and the quadriceps and the uh, hamstring muscles are significantly replaced with fat, with fibrosis, uh, and that then uh, leads to the loss of function. The muscle that's outlined here on the right is called the gracilis muscle, and it's there in the controls. And what's really interesting is it looks virtually the same in the, this young man at age 14. And what's different about that muscle, the gracilis, is it's not involved in the wear and tear of everyday walking. It's a muscle that kind of torques the leg, so you can look at the bottom of your shoe, basically. But it's not something that's used every day. And so it's one of the muscles that is, is spared in Duchesne. Um, John Porter has done a lot of work actually looking at the eye muscles. They're not mechanically stressed. They're relatively spared uh, in Duchesne. So it's the combination of the lack of dystrophin with the activation of NF-kappa B by muscular, by mechanical stress that triggers the processes that ultimately lead to fat and fibrosis. And so we believe that this process of muscle degeneration can be slowed if we can target levels of uh, activated NF-kappa B. Now, in this study, we are looking uh, at an earlier stage of disease. So you, you know that, the, the, uh, that uh, the functional measures that we look at are different uh, in different age groups. And we're going to be looking uh, in the younger ambulatory boys, age four to seven. Uh, and at this stage, if you were to look at that muscle, the MRI, uh, you would, it would look relatively normal. It wouldn't be replaced by fat or fibrosis. But what you would see is that there are MRI markers of inflammation uh, in that muscle. And we know that when boys are given steroids at that age, these functional measures that are outlined here improve. So things like time to stand from supine, time to run and walk uh, 10 meters, time to climb four stairs, and other mu measures of muscle strength and overall function, such as the North Star Ambulatory Assessment. So this is the group that we are going to initially uh, be enrolling in our study. But then we're very much aware that we want to want, uh, expand and look at the, the boys that are younger and look at the boys that are older as well. Now, what, what steroids do is they are very strong inhibitors of the NF-kappa B pathway. And when they do that, they have anti-inflammatory effects, anti-fibrotic effects, and uh, an improvement uh, in muscle function. 
But on the other side of the balance is that they drive glucocorticoid receptor-mediated effects that are negative, and you know about these as well. There's effects on bone that cause osteoporosis. There's metabolic effects that, that, such as on glucose. Um, but very importantly, in, in almost every, in other diseases where glucocorticoids are used, it's well known that they have a negative impact on muscle. They inhibit muscle growth, they promote muscle breakdown, uh, and muscle atrophy is, is common in other diseases where they're used, but it's very difficult to sort out um, in Duchenne because of the underlying process. So what our, our hypothesis is, is if we can inhibit and activate NF-kappa B and get the positive effects, including on muscle regeneration, then we will an, eliminate the negative effects. So what CAT 1004 is, uh, is a molecule it's orally administered, uh, and it's designed to inhibit the NF-kappa B pathway. Now, it's a new investigational drug. It's not been approved by any regulatory body uh, as uh, an approved drug. And so we're looking at it here for the first time uh, in boys with Duchenne. It is uh, engineered by conjugating or linking together two individual bioactive molecules. One is salicylate. That's a compound that's known to, that is well known. It's related to aspirin, but it's not aspirin. And DHA, which is one of the omega-3 fatty acids. And they're linked together using the catabasis technology linker um, that allows them to be absorbed in the intestine, and they are delivered to the cell and released by an enzyme that only occurs within the cell. And that releases the salicylate, and the DHA within the cell. Then those two compounds act in different parts of the NF-kappa B pathway. The salicylate acts to reduce inflammation. It acts to uh, reduce a lot of other uh, inflammatory mediators that are triggered by uh, NF-kappa B. And the DHA also acts uh, to uh, decrease NF-kappa B, but also to increase some of the um, uh, mediators that resolve uh, some of the disease processes as well. So the advantage is we're acting at two points in the NF-kappa B pathway. And what's very important is the reason this works is because of the linker. If we gave salicylate and DHA by themselves, then we would not see the same effect. And we've seen this both in animal studies and I'll, I'll show you also uh, in uh, people as well. So it's a very important take-home message. It's not the same as giving the two together. It's the linker that allows them to be delivered within the cell. So going to the, the uh, potential is if, if the key here is the absence of dystrophin with mechanical stress activating NF-kappa B leading to muscle degeneration, leading to inflammation and fibrosis, and inhibiting muscle degeneration. While steroids can address the two on the left here, CAT 1004 also uh, allows uh, or improves the inhibition of muscle degener regeneration and allows muscles to regenerate. So what we... Um, have done so far is we've looked uh, in adults in several phase one studies. These are not uh, boys with Duchenne. They're not adults with muscular dystrophy. They have gotten doses of up to 2,000 milligrams twice a day for up to 14 days. And before we brought this into the clinic, into patients, we had a, a full panel of preclinical studies, toxicology studies, that did not show any safety signals in animals any areas of concern that we should be looking at. And in people, we did not see safety signals. We did not see um, laboratory changes in, in liver function tests, in kidney function tests or hematology, no changes in EKG or, or significant adverse events. In two weeks of, of dosing in adults, 
um, we saw uh, two patients out of the about uh, 60 patients who had diarrhea at the highest dose. We saw two patients who had gastroenteritis, one of which was a placebo patient, uh, and a couple of patients had an upper respiratory Ill, uh, infection. All of these were mild. Uh, none of them related, resulted in drug discontinuation. And uh, that's important information when we're thinking of bringing the drug now into boys with Duchenne. We want to have that basis there uh, and understand the safety uh, better in adults. One of the things that we also did uh, in the phase one study is look to see whether or not we could see a reduction in activated NF-kappa B. And we did this as a single dose. We did this in normal, healthy uh, subjects. We gave them either at three different times. We gave them placebo. We gave them a single dose of CAT 1004 or we gave them the individual components, the DHA and salicylate, going back to the question of, does it have to be linked together? And the answer is very clearly yes, that we didn't see any inhibition of, NF, of activated NF-kappa B, either with placebo or with DHA or salicylate, but we did see a 70% reduction of activated NF-kappa B with even a single dose of CAT 1004. So we're very encouraged by this, and this will also allow us to understand the effects better in the clinical trial that we're, we're starting uh, in, in boys with Duchenne. Now, before uh, we would go into uh, a study in boys with Duchenne, we want to have um, understanding of what CAT 1004 can do in preclinical models. There's been a couple of models that are, uh, have been used a great deal. The MDX mouse uh, model that completely lacks dystrophin, as well as the golden retriever muscular dystrophy uh, dog model. These studies were supported uh, by the uh, MDA, and they were done in Lee Sweeney's lab at uh, the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, these are studies uh, that are shown on this slide in it, where the mice were dosed for six months, uh, and these are mice that are stressed. They are actually, they run around in their cages, so we make sure that they are, are, are exerting themselves and, and having mu uh, mechanical stress on their muscles. And what uh, was seen here was that the muscle, when either CAT1004 or a very closely related uh, analog of that, which is called CAT1041, uh, were given, we saw that muscle in function improved uh, when muscles were repeatedly uh, stimulated. We saw that the uh, animals were able to go further on the running wheel. This is spontaneously running in their cages. Uh, and importantly, we also saw an improvement in diaphragm function. Uh, there were all, these are all statistically significant. We also looked uh, at uh, fibrosis. Uh, this is shown in the quadriceps. Uh, in the MDX mouse model. Uh, and untreated, what you're looking at here is that the blue part is the stain for fibrosis, and the red is the muscle tissue uh, that you're seeing there. And in the animals that were treated for six months, you're seeing much less of the, of the blue, so you're seeing less fibrosis. Uh, we also looked at the total amount of muscle, the muscle mass in these animals, and the gastrox are corresponding to the lower leg, the quadriceps corresponding to the upper leg, all showed improvements with the analog of CAT 1004. But interestingly, there was a, a decrease in the heart muscle mass. And this is actually good, because at this age, the MDX uh, mice are starting to develop cardiac disease and actually have heavier heart weights than normal. So this is pushing it back in the normal direction here. So we are ex very excited uh, to be starting the MOVE DMD study. Uh, we have been working for uh, over a year planning this with investigators from the imaging DMD study. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, we think, a very important trial uh, that will allow us to understand the effects 
of CAT 1004. It's going to be a two-part clinical trial looking at safety and the effects of CAT 1004 in boys with Duchenne. Part A is starting imminently uh, this month. And uh, the goal here, the reason that we divided this into two parts is first to make sure that we are starting with one week of dosing. We understand safety in boys uh, and understand how much drug is absorbed into the bloodstream. So we're going to look at safety and pharmacokinetics, which is the measurement of the, the amount of drug in the bloodstream. We're also going to look uh, at uh, functional measures uh, in the boys. We're going to measure, we're going to look with MRI uh, and at the lower and the upper leg muscles, uh, and we'll be able to see the, um, the amount of inflammation, essentially, in these muscles. We'll also be looked, looking with timed functional tests, uh, things like the four-step climb, 10-meter walk run, and time to stand, and also a measure of, of muscle strength. So we'll do that part initially. That's the part that's actually posted on clintrials.gov right now. And when, as we get this information, we will then expand the study to a 12-week part of the study, which we're calling Part B, which will look at safety and effects of CAT 1004 when given for 12 weeks. And in that study, uh, that will be a placebo-controlled study at two doses. And it's shown here on the next slide uh, that in Part A, everybody will be getting CAT 1004 at one of three doses, and we'll be doing this in a stepwise fashion so that Initially, six boys will, will get the drug for a week. Then we will be monitoring their safety very closely. The investigators will. And we'll also have a data safety and monitoring committee, an independent group that will be looking at, at the safety of the drug in these six boys. And they will then give the go-ahead to go to the next dose. Again, look at six boys and then go have the data safety monitoring board uh, review and then go to the, to the third dose. So that will allow us to make sure that we are um, dosing the right dose to get enough blood levels uh, in the boys. Then these same boys will, cross, will move to the double-blind randomized control part of the study, and they will be randomized. They won't necessarily get the same dose, They'll be randomized to one of two doses uh, or placebo. And at the end of this 12-week period, they will, we will have, again, assessments of uh, MRI, of time functional tests, safety. So we'll look at that at the beginning and the end of that 12-week period. We're also planning that the boys who are treated with placebo for 12 weeks would then cross over and be treated with CAT 1004 for an additional 12 weeks. So everybody would ultimately get, get the drug uh, in the study. So MRI is a very important part of the study. Um, it is, this is actually the first study in which MRI will be used as the primary endpoint. And uh, we, as I mentioned, we've been working with the Imaging DMD centers uh, that have really done landmark work uh, in allowing uh, an understanding of the natural history of Duchenne. Uh, it allows them to assess muscle health, and really the, one of the major goals was to be able to assess the potential effects of investigational drugs on muscle without the need to biopsy. Now, on the right here is actually a boy with one of the uh, investigators here, but the boy is here in, in the MRI. So you, you probably have, have seen MRIs. They are big things that are noisy, uh, but the boy, is, it's only his leg that's in it. And they actually, um, this is uh, from the uh, University of Florida, Dr. Vandenborn site, and they have done a great job uh, in uh, making sure the boys are, are comfortable and entertained. Uh, during the approximately one hour that it takes for the boys to be uh, here. There's no radiation. There's no injections. And we are, are working closely with the imaging DMD centers that have been doing this in boys for now several years uh, and have great uh, expertise. 
what uh, the studies have, have shown is that even in young boys, the MRI can, can demonstrate that muscles have inflammatory changes. And very importantly, as you saw on, on that earlier slide, MRI can be very different. You can see that the muscle is very different in one part of the, of, or one part of the muscle than the other. The, the, there can be fibrosis. Um, and so it's important to look at the whole muscle to understand what's going on. Uh, it's also shown that the same muscles that are most affected with MRI are the ones that develop fibrosis and replacement of muscle tissue. So we think this is a, a wonderful method, um, and it will be very important uh, for understanding the effects of CAT-1004 in boys with Duchenne. So we are, are uh, in terms of the boys that we will be enrolling in the study, uh, we are uh, focusing on boys from four to seven that have not yet begun steroid therapy. Um, this is because steroids have an effect on NF-kappa-B, so we want to, to make sure that we can see an effect uh, and look at the boys that are not yet on steroids, who would not normally be on, on steroids at that age. So they will need to be able to walk independently. They will need to be immunized up to date uh, for influenza and chickenpox. Um, they would they uh, have to not have used steroids within the last six months. And of course, then during the study, we wouldn't anticipate that they would start on steroids. Um, no medical conditions uh, that would uh, compromise their safety uh, during the study. Uh, and they would not be on any other investigational uh, agent, although they could be in a natural history study. Certainly, that wouldn't preclude them from, from being in the study. A CAT 1004 is given uh, as a a soft gel capsule, and uh, what I've shown here on the right is the capsule. This is a 100 milligram capsule and a 250 milligram cap capsule. They're soft and they're kind of slippery, so they're easy to swallow. And what we um, used as a benchmark here was a Tic Tac. So we made them smaller than a Tic Tac or smaller than an M&M. &M. Uh, because way back when, Pat Furlong told us that the boys uh, are learning how to use, how to swallow Tic Tacs. Um, it will be, CAT 1004 will be taken with, with food, um, and uh, we are uh, going to be looking at uh, a number of other tests uh, in the study. Um, so we'll be looking at blood tests to monitor safety, to measure the amount of CAT-1004 in the blood. We'll be looking at time functional tests, 10-meter walk run, time to climb four steps, and time to, to rise from lying down. We actually don't have six-minute walk on here because that tends not to be a sensitive measure in boys of this age. We will do muscle strength testing uh, of uh, a couple of, of different uh, muscle groups. Uh, and the North Star Ambulatory Assessment, as well as another questionnaire about general health and well-being that the parents will be asked to fill out. Now, there's a lot of experience uh, with these tests in boys uh, of this age. Um, we, each one of these tests takes a relatively short time, so this is something that um, these centers have actually been doing for a while, and, and this seems to uh, work in terms of the um, attention of, of boys this age and not being an undue burden on them. The, uh, cat, the study is going to be conducted uh, at three centers, uh, at the University of Florida Gainesville uh, with Drs. Vandenberg, Kang, and Subramoni, uh, at, in Portland, Oregon, uh, the Shriners Children's Hospital, Dr. Fenanger, Roosman, and uh, Rooney, uh, and Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, Dr. Tenekun and Dr. Young, uh, will be the investigators. And we're, very, we're delighted uh, that Karen Project uh, has been uh, generous in their support uh, and will be providing travel support for patients uh, and their families uh, to come to one of these three sites uh, for the study. Uh, we are actively getting the sites. Uh, initiated. Uh, they are not uh, open for recruitment uh, yet. Uh, we anticipate this will be happening uh, in the next couple weeks. 
Uh, and once the trial starts, what we will do is we will provide um, status updates both on our website, catabases.com, uh, as well as clinicaltrials.gov. Uh, so the trial sites will start enrolling, uh, start screening boys for enrollment very soon. Uh, you've seen the, the general enrollment criteria. Uh, and you know, if, if you or you know uh, families uh, that uh, would be interested in the study or your own family, you should talk about it with your child's physician, with a site. There's contact information on the clintrials.gov uh, site as well. Uh, and we'd be happy to to, uh, to direct uh, your inquiries and make sure that you have the right information. Of course, once you once you uh, get to a site, then then there'll be more information provided in terms of the informed consent form, uh, as well as as details of what happens on, on each day during the study. So to summarize. Uh, we think that CAT uh, 1004 uh, has great potential uh, in terms of being able to interrupt the uh, sequence of what happens when there is lack of dystrophin along with mechanical stress. And we think CAT 1004 will be able to, to prevent the activation of NF-kappa B that leads down the pathway to muscle degeneration, inflammation, fibrosis, inhibition of muscle regeneration, and ultimately, of course, to, to loss of function. We know that steroids work down on this pathway uh, in part, but they also work in other, on other pathways that have side effects and limit their effectiveness. I've shown you some of the data from uh, CAT 1004, as well as a closely related uh, analog, uh, and we've seen positive effects in animal models of uh, Duchenne. We, in the um, inclusion criteria, there's no specific inclusion uh, for uh, the genetic um, type of uh, uh, mutation. Uh, so we think that this can be effective across the different mutations. We have, at this point, finished our phase one program in adults, and we haven't seen safety uh, signals, but we have seen effects on activated NF-kappa B. The FDA has given us orphan uh, drug designation uh, for the treatment of Duchenne. Uh, and we are truly excited to be starting the MOVE DMD study. And we really appreciate the, all of the help along the way that the uh, parent project uh, has given us. In, in, um, in an, and I will say that they also uh, were, gave us guidance in terms of, of things to think about uh, in the trial design to lessen the burden on boys. And, and they've also done that in terms of providing the travel support. So very much appreciate uh, their support. So with that, I think we should probably open that, open it to questions at this point. So thanks, Joanne. And I just remind the listeners that you can enter any questions you might have into the, the chat box um, that should be apparent on your screen. And I guess so, on, can I actually, I forgot the last slide about thanking everybody yeah. else because the Imaging DMD group has, has really been fantastic in terms of, of um, helping design this study. Uh, uh, Professor Lee Sweeney, uh, Vanderborn, uh, and uh, Rich Binkle have been great and, and have really had a lot of input into the design of this study and it makes us even more excited about it going forward. Thanks, Joanne. So just, just to kick off the questions, um, there's a question that, that uh, comment that imaging DMD is expanding in adding site, added additional sites that are part of that consortium. Will the sites for, for CAT 1004 expand mm -hmm. along um, with that? Yes. And what we have um, been, we've been working with the imaging DMD sites. There are three of them at this point. Uh, and they have um, a, a accumulated, really, and developed a great deal of expertise uh, in the MRI measurements uh, in these young boys. This is, this is a, a, a challenge, um, and they do it without um, sedating the boys, um, which would have potential side effects. Uh, and so we are, are working with those sites, uh, in that, in the, and uh, we'll be planning on helping provide travel uh, facilitating travel uh, to these sites. So right now for this, this study, we are not anticipating going 
um, beyond the three sites that have already um, been identified. Okay. And on the travel point, can, can patients from outside the U.S. participate if, if one of these sites is willing to take, take them? And, and the follow-up to that would be, do the travel grants cover people outside the U.S.? I, I, it, I think that the hard part there is in the second part of the study they, is three months. And so it's an investigational uh, drug that is, a, that is um, uh, the FDA has uh, looked at the, um, the background for, so they wouldn't be able to bring the drug back to their home countries, essentially. So I think that's actually the problem there, beyond, rather than travel. Uh, it's being able to move to di back with, with the drug because it's not going to be given just at the site. It's going to be given at home um, by, the, uh, by the parents. Right. So one, one question that we get a lot is, is access to, to drug at the end of the study. Can you? I know you commented a bit on that, but can you say a bit more about that? Yeah. Uh, we have heard, we absolutely hear the, the parents on that, and we intend um, to make the drug as available as, as we can. We, this is a drug that we have uh, made in large quantities. We don't anticipate that that supply uh, would, would be necessarily um, uh, the, the issue, but what we need to know is that the drug is safe and effective and, in, and shows promise. And once we have those uh, in place, then we would um, be able to, um, in conjunction with discussions with FDA, we would want to move forward and provide it um, uh, to extend in the patients that are in this study. Okay. You know, the, the other really important question, I think, for this, and, and I know, again, you had this on the slide, but I'm just going to ask you to repeat about what, what the rules are as far as steroid status with, with entering the trial. Mm -hmm. So the, what we um, the what we have set in the inclusion criteria is an interval of six months, and the reason we said six months is there's actually very little known about how long the effect of steroids happens, how, how long it extends. So six month period, if, so that if a boy had been started on steroids and, and stopped because the side effects were not acceptable and that happened when they were four, and this is now a year later, that's fine. Um, what we are not advising people is that they would to, um, to withdraw steroids for the study. Um, so that's not our advice at all. But they would need to be off steroids for the six-month period prior to the study starting. Okay. So there can be a washout period arranged with, with their physician, but only with their physician. We have, and that's not a part that we're involved with. Okay, right, right. So, if if someone's interested in having their their son participate in the in the in the clinical trial, um, who do they contact? So there is a, a contact uh, email. It's my contact email on on the clinicaltrial.gov, and we will be um, making sure that the right people at the site uh, get that. They can also contact the site uh, directly. Um, and um, so we will be providing updates in terms of when the study is open uh, and they're actually uh, able to enroll patients. We'll be able to um, put that up uh, on our website uh, as well as uh, to update clinicaltrials.gov appropriately. Okay. And, and while, while we're waiting for those sites to be initiated, is, is there, I mean, can, can people get on the waiting list for, by contacting the sites or you? I, I think, yes, we would be happy to, um, to reach out and um, we'll, we wouldn't be able to, to sign consents or something until we have the sites active, but we'll make sure that, 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 is, that their information gets there as soon as it can. And one one of the advanced questions was a was a, from a parent with a child with with Becker muscular dystrophy and uh, who's starting to have ambulation problems. Is, is uh, would that would that individual be eligible for the trial? So we have um, 
at, at this point, we are looking at this age group, and, I, and that may be actually a broader question than just the, the patient with Becker's, but what about patients, right. you know, boys that are in, in their teens that are non-ambulatory? And what uh, we are, are, are looking with this initial study at, at the younger boys, but it's very much a part of our overall plan to be looking at the other age groups. So to be looking at boys that are even younger than four, potentially, uh, and also to be looking at boys that are um, that are no longer ambulatory and have gone off steroids uh, that are in their teens or, or 20s. Um, so that's an important, we realize that there's a, a, a huge need there uh, and that is an area where um, CAT uh, 1004 could be beneficial. So we will be... Um, so this is our initial clinical trial. We, we, uh, anticipate, we are planning as part of our overall development plan uh, to look at, um, at patients in those other age groups. Um, and right now we are looking at patients with Duchenne who have a genetic um, uh, mutation that's consistent with Duchenne. Um, but I think that um, the question about Becker's you know, asked about, well, are there other, other diseases where this could be helpful and where inflammation plays a role, other muscle diseases, and that's certainly a, a possibility uh, in the future. Uh, because we don't think that this process, we know that, that you know, even when boys get to their teens, if they steroids benefit them and there is a decrease in, in respiratory function when they go off steroids. So we know that there's inflammation that's continuing the disease process. We don't think this is specific to this age group. This was the age group that we are starting our, our initial study. But ultimately, we think that, that CAT-1004 could be useful across the age ranges um, uh, in Duchenne. Good, thanks. So a, a really exciting aspect of the study is your use of, of Skeletal muscle MRI is the primary endpoint. Do you want to say a bit more about that? Yeah. About your choice there? Sure. Um, I think that the work that has been done um, to date in, in being able to look at um, the natural history of uh, Duchenne with MRI and very has been really valuable to the field. Um, what one of the, the important uh, aspects of, of the work that's been done to date uh, is that some of these um, MRI measures, uh, such as the measure of inflammation, such as the measure of how much fat there is uh, in the muscle, have been shown to correlate very well with functional tests, with in older boys in the six-minute walk and younger boy in all boys with the, the 10-meter walk run uh, time to climb stairs. So that it, it's really a, a good evidence that the what you're seeing across the muscle on MRI is very much reflected uh, in the, the functional uh, effects or the functional uh, abilities of that muscle. Uh, so it, it's a really exciting um, tool to be using in developing new therapies uh, for Duchenne. So I think that it's going to be much more used in, in the future as well. We're excited to be the first study uh, that's using it as a primary endpoint uh, in our phase one, two study. Yes, and the, the encouraging thing for, for us looking at this from PPMD's viewpoint is that by utilizing uh, skeletal muscle MRI in a clinical trial in this way, it might help with qualifying this measure is, is a biomarker for future clinical trials. It's, um, the, um, the, the clearly, it, it was very interesting when the FDA had a workshop on dystrophin um, and measures, of, you know, looking at it under the microscope, then but the la one of the last talks uh, was from Dr. Lee Sweeney showing MRI and showing mm -hmm. the heterogeneity across the muscle and how powerful uh, MRI can be as a tool um, so we think that, that it's going to be a very, uh, give us a, a great understanding of the um, effects of the drug here. Great. And, and it's also, I, I think that um, it, it is, um, it, it has advantages in that uh, it doesn't require an injection or, or sedation, uh, and it can be, um, it, the boys seem to, 
to, from what we hear, obviously, but you seem to do well uh, with it, and they keep coming back to the imaging DMD sites year after year for that. Good. Well, so, so Joanne, unless, unless there's any other questions that come in at the last minute here, I, I'd say just give you an opportunity to say anything else, make any other comments you'd like to make for the study before we wrap up. Um, I think that um, one of the, um, the questions that, that comes up also is, is, are, is the 12 weeks going to be long enough? And I, one of the, the reasons that we did design the this, this study this way is based on the effect of glucocorticoids on MRI in muscle over that time period and knowing that there is a, an appreciable effect over 12 weeks. So that's why you know, we want to do a study that, that can potentially have a, an effect. We don't want to miss an effect that could be there. So we've designed it um, in that way because of the previous uh, data uh, on steroids and how quickly the effect uh, grows in there. So we we want uh, we at Catabasis are, are really committed to doing what we think is the right study um, and to be able to understand whether or not um, Cat 1004 has a, a potential role uh, in Duchenne, not just for the boys of this age, but for boys uh, across the, the age spectrum of the disease. So we are, are we're very excited to be starting the study, and uh, we feel incredibly um, uh, fortunate to also uh, have the community backing um, uh, and the input from members of the community, from uh, experts in the area, uh, and uh, advocacy organizations like PPMD to be helping us uh, move uh, move forward in this area. So thank you, all of you. Well, thanks, Joanne, and you know, we'd be very happy to, to continue to help disseminate information about the trial, so, so please keep us posted as, as to how we can help. Um, I think for all the participants, thanks for joining today. I, I note that if you've missed any of this, it was, it was recorded, and it will be available online soon on, on the PPMD website. And thanks for your participation. <laughs>